Hello and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. Very different, unique episode this week, all about personal finance 101. And I know we've never really talked about that on this podcast, but I have a friend, Joe DeSanto, who is very, very good at it. And we have a cool story of how we met. And I was just thinking that would be kind of fun to have him on and talk about some of his fundamentals that he's learned and what he teaches his clients. Because my goal is for anybody listening to this podcast, I really hope you have a super successful career career and along with that comes making money and if you start to make money then you should know the right ways to allocate it and you should know some basic fundamentals i think anybody should know that so this episode is an attempt to cover some of those if you find it interesting let us know if you'd like to deep dive into other topics or if you feel like this was a little bit too far out of place for where all my friends let me know that too i'm always just trying to make cool stuff and help my friends out Let's get right into it. Enjoy. Where are all my friends? Joe DeSanto. I'm really, really excited for this one because this is the most (laughs) unlikely and funniest, coolest story of how we became friends and how we met. I love that so, so much. We literally met because I needed help with putting together my LLC and I searched the internet for like basic tips and I found your blog, Play Louder. (laughs) And hit you up, sent you an email, and you live now in the town that I grew up in, but I live now in the town that you did everything in. So you live in Florida. I live in L.A. now. It's it's a whole thing. It's pretty, pretty funny story. It's uh, SEO. SEO brought us together. I like to say. And the reason I say all of this for the listener is I was so happily surprised at how rad you were and how much you understood a creative profession. Because to me, like, I think we're always like, you know, we're chasing our goals, we're trying to succeed. And then what happens when you succeed? Ideally, you make some amount more money than just enough to survive. (laughs) And that in itself can honestly become a problem because then you're just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know about taxes. I don't know how to save. I don't know about this, 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 like everybody. It's just something that's not taught to us. And it's kind of like this weird fumbly thing where you have to figure out personal finance and there's a lot to it. And it was so refreshing to meet someone like you where you have such a good grip of it. And like, I, I genuinely feel like it's like a hobby of yours. Like it's something you, you like, yeah. like you study this, you write about this cause you like it and you have such a good grasp of it. And not only that, you're like, cool. Like you get it. You Thanks, owned man. a production company in LA and like, you understand the creative side of it. So I wanted to do this episode very specifically, like in my head, the working title is Personal Finance 101. All right. And hopefully giving a listener some basic tools to start thinking with like, oh, wow, I'm starting to have any amount of success or it doesn't even actually matter if success or not, just like some type of a grasp of personal finance and how to do that. Sure. Um So thank you so much for joining. I know this is a slightly different episode type of where all my friends, but I think it'll be a really, really popular one. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll say that I don't always just go on finance and real estate shows. I do go on other types of shows because, you know, money invades every aspect of your life, uh, whether you like it or not. So it kind of crosses over with all sorts of other things. So I'll start by saying that. Secondly, I want to agree with you that I am cool. So I appreciate <laughs> you pointing that out. I think, you know, that's important to establish that up front. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then third, yeah, I can give a rundown of personal finance. And you're right. It is kind of a it's it is a hobby of mine. And, you know, that's a good point because, you know, all hobbies are good. No question about it. But some of them like give you extra benefits in your life. Like exercise as a hobby gives you the extra benefit of health and, and you enjoy it. Fucking win-win, right? And and finance, personal finance is kind of like that. But the reason I say that is I think it's important for people to kind of say to themselves, all right, like, do I like this or do, you know, can I can I make it a hobby that I would enjoy, which would, you know, prompt me to do it? And if not, if it's like, oh man, I just hate it. You know, even if it's like, even if I like, tried it and you know did it for a month and tried to keep up with my finances i'll probably like fall off it and just kind of recognize that about yourself and either say you know what i'm not going to be a whiner i'm going to do it even though i don't like it because it's good for me 
or you know maybe you enlist the help of somebody to to yeah. uh, to help you like kind of like a personal trainer with exercise you know yeah um, it, so i do that kind of uh, for for a lot of people now too and that's a good thing i mean the thing about exercise which is like another you know if you don't do it and as you get older and you eat a lot you get fat so like it's literally looking at you in the mirror like your failure yeah. <laughs> And if you're single, like, you know, it potentially could inhibit you from getting, you know, getting a date or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it, there's motivation there. But it's like, you know, your finances, it's not as obvious, you know, but even though but, but I do believe that for most people, it's kind of it's kind of sitting in the back of their head. Um, if it's not, you know, in the forefront, it is kind of sitting in the back of their head, sort of nagging at them. But um, but anyway, I don't know if any of that made sense, but I'm going to move on to your um, <laughs> kind of one on one like overview. I mean, I guess yeah. I'll give you like a little bit of my thing. Like, for yeah, I was going to say, like, quickly, like paint the picture. Like, I want to hear a little bit about you and like tell that story of mate like therapy and all that. And then like we'll get right into that. OK, well, the therapy story. Um, so, yeah, I, I was actually a photography major in college um, and. I uh, always want, you know, I, I always was into photography since like uh, high school and stuff. And so I pursued that. And then I was like going to go to New York. I went to school in Massachusetts. So I was going to go to New York and just pursue being a photo assistant, you know, kind of photographer mm -hmm. and, and go try to be a photographer. And then like family friend, uh, actually it was my girlfriend's dad's like sister's I don't know, cuz and some through marriage. It was some like weird connection. He was like, I this this guy, family guy, he owns some kind of graphics company in the city in New York. But you know, would you want to talk to him? Would that help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking totally talk to this guy. Mm -hmm. And this poor guy, I just started calling this guy like a nutcase. And I just like wouldn't relent <laughs> until until he got back to me. It turned out, you know, he owned a post-production company, uh, like a kind of a traditional like you know, finishing visual effects, finishing color correction, kind of post-production company called Nice Shoes. And, uh, nice. you know, after starting to work in that industry, I realized how busy he actually was. And uh, I felt bad. But I, I saw it and I was like, oh, my God, this is totally rad. I don't really know much about video. Like, obviously, I knew a little bit, but uh, I didn't do film or whatever in school. I did just still. So and I, but I did a little digital imaging. I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like it's like Photoshop, but in motion, you know, learning about visual effects and all that. It was just like right up my alley. And I was like, oh, this is a cool business. So I managed to get a job there in the shipping room, like, you know, classic entry level dealio and yeah. um, worked my way up, you know, through the ranks. I, I was in New York for a couple of years and I moved to L.A., continued kind of work my way through the ranks of post-production and editorial and stuff. But I always wanted to own my own business when the time was right which I was about 30, we, we decided to break off and start our own post-production company. And it's called Therapy mm. Studios. It still exists. My partners cashed me out a few years ago, but they're still going strong. It's in Culver City. Yeah. And that's, I met John through you and he was one of your partners, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, John and I actually met on a semester abroad in college. Uh, ran, became random roommates in Italy. And then we just became like best friends and, and we, like the same stuff and so we, we we always were like thought we would do a company together at some point um so it worked and out did. actually we did we did and, and like to to summarize all of that the reason why i'm saying that and the reason why i wanted that short little backstory is for a listener it's already crazy that i met joe off of basically internet seo thank you google mm -hmm. <laughs> but then to be like oh wow you really did this out here in la and you had this post-production company then meeting John and going to therapy and actually physically seeing it, I was like, oh, this is real. Like, it was beautiful. <laughs> like, it's not like you guys just, like, dick around and edit some stuff for, like, random YouTubers. Like, you do, like, very real projects, like documentaries that you've seen on Netflix and on major broadcasting networks. And, I mean, crazy big music videos and client yes. projects. And the space is friggin beautiful and the audio studios where you'll mix audio oh, right. is you nicer to, than to see our studios dude it's nicer than than studios that i've been with bands that have recorded entire albums on like it is so real and i was so impressed so the reason i just wanted to preface all of Thanks, that man. is like you 
in my book, are extremely qualified to speak on personal finance and understand the entertainment industry or production. Like, it's not like you did this as a hobbyist. Like, you really did this. You guys bought that piece of land for therapy. Like, you're very qualified and like you, you're you accomplished. You've done this. And I, I just wanted to qualify that because I appreciate finding. That. Yeah, totally. There is a good wrap or tie in to personal finance in this story, uh, actually. Mm. So like I did a lot of stuff for the business um, because I was a creative person. You know, I wasn't good enough at like graphic design and, and what have you and animation because I did kind of get into that, like After Effects design, motion graphics. I wasn't really good enough to compete at the level of New York and L.A. creative people. Um, I came to that re realization. But, you know, I had other skills. It was like um, was like marketing, um, managing people's managing projects. So I sort of went the producer route. I thought I could essentially excel more in that realm. So I did all that. So, uh, that was a lot of my my function at the business. But also I was like managed all the finances for the business. Um, mm. And I and I did that even at my previous companies. And I have no like, tr you know, classic classic training in finances you know what i mean i didn't i'm not an accountant i'm not a cpa i didn't go to i didn't go to bookkeeping school the entire way that i taught myself how to manage business finances and and also personal finance because i say i consider them the same thing yeah. was just because i wanted to like manage my own personal finances when i was like getting out of college and i started using quicken um yeah, literally, I taught myself pretty significant amount of like financial knowledge and know how to the just learn using Quicken on my own, starting with like, you know, my checking account and a credit card and just kind of tracking that. Yeah. And learning how like money works and finances works. And honestly, like when I got before at the, in the job I was at before starting therapy, I, I became the executive producer at another editorial company. And like. I just brought that knowledge to that job. Like it wasn't part of my job description, but I was like, dude, I, you know, talking to the owner, I, we need to know the numbers. I need to know how we're doing. I need to, you know, and his part, his original partner was like in his seventies at the time is a really cool guy actually. Um, but he was doing the finances for the company at that point, And he was doing them all on paper. No, like way. literally <laughs> like, I would be like, he's like, oh, Roger can get you like the financial information. I go down there. I'm like, Roger, like I need some basics. And he's like, OK, come back to me like in a week. I'll I'll have something written out. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> There's holy crap. We're in the computer age here. So I got all their bookkeeping on like QuickBooks and everything. And I taught myself QuickBooks at that point. And then I sort of just, you know, I taught Roger how to use it. And then I could have access to all the information that I yeah. needed to, feed, to to know if the company was doing well and if we were, you know, meeting our goals and, you know, if we were overspending, underspending, you know, what were you spending on this, that, and the other. And so that all just came from my interest in personal finance. You know, it really actually made a huge impact on my life, amazingly. I don't think it, in this way we do that in everyone's life, but, but that's where I kind of hone my thoughts. Well, I'm like, hey, I took this just managing my own personal finances. I was able to apply that to running a business. Like, so I yeah. really was kind of like, oh, you know, our, our personal finances are like a business, you know, like you, your personal life, your money, it needs to be a well-functioning business. And the basics are it, you need to make more than you spend. <laughs> you know, number one, yeah. you yeah. need to know what you're spending your money on so that you can be more efficient um, or more disciplined about your spending so that you'll have more money to reinvest in the business of you, a la your savings and, you know, stocks and real estate and whatever. So I um, I really just kind of look at it that way. And I, I think everybody should. Um, but I think part of the reason people don't is, again, back to the hobby thing. They just they're just not money people. They just they just just bores the shit out of them, I guess. And yeah. um, the idea of doing it, you know, just just makes them depressed. And then you don't do it. And then it kind of piles up on you. And then you're you're not performing well and then you want to hide from it because you don't want to face it a lot of the times especially when you're young and you know you're not making money but one of the big yeah. complaints or one of the big kind of like 
you know, things I would get, cause I would just try to mentor my young employees and I would try to get them on this, you know, train of personal finance. And one of the things they would say is, well, Joe, I just, I don't have much going on. Like, why do I need to bother tracking it and quick? And I'm like, you know, that's the perfect time to start because it's super easy. Like yeah. you can set your stuff up and do it like an hour a month but you get yourself in the routine of it. And I'm like, hopefully soon, you're going to have a lot more going on. And then you'll be in control, you know, like start easy and small when it's an yeah. easy thing to bite off and uh, and grow into it instead of like waiting till you supposedly have stuff going on. And, um, you know, what ends up happening is if you don't, you know, if you don't kind of manage your finances, it's not that, you know, like, shit will go to hell and you know whatever but i really think you won't save as much as you can um you won't i think it actually improves how much you make too because you get your mind in tune with money and your mind in tune with business and being entrepreneurial and that pushes you actually to find new ways to make money or get raises or whatever but Regardless, you know, the outside of that, if you're not tracking your finances and getting a good handle on what you're spending, you're very likely overspending. You're overspending on stuff that is not that meaningful to you. And you really should look at it this way. Like every dollar you you needlessly waste on something is like you tacking more, year, you know, more days and years of work onto the end of your life. Um and it, when you're young, it's hard to care about that. You're like, ah, I'm going to work forever, whatever. You know, I love working and, and I did too. But inevitably, I don't care who you are, you're going to yeah. want to like slow down or you're going to get aged out, phased out. You're going to start to hate what you do, want to make a career change, whatever it is. And you're going to yeah. be like, shit, you know, I feel like I might have missed out on a lot of savings time, not paying attention to my finances. And a lot of people call me now, like they're in their 40s and they're like, I don't have a plan. I put it off. I never dealt with it. Now I feel like I'm way behind, you know? Yeah. And the truth yeah. is they are. Um, so it's just it's just an important habit to get into. And the younger you get into it, the better. And the younger you get into it when you have less going on, the easier it is to do. Um, yeah, totally. <clears throat> and so, to jump in there, yeah. like, so... I guess like it's hard for me to to do an episode like this and cover an entire I mean like dude the amount of time and like what can go into personal finance. And I talk huge. a lot and I go off on <laughs> dumb tangents and so I so, burn up a lot of time. <laughs> no 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 and it's it's great and like in my head I'm kind of thinking I'm like if if this episode is a hit and if people relate to this and want to learn more about it and if you're willing to take a little bit of time we could always come in specifically talk about a subject but the reason why I wanted to do this episode was I had a personal moment and it was around, it was somewhere in like my early days of touring where I think like for the first time ever, I had like $5,000 saved after mm -hmm. like all my bills were paid. And I was like, this is crazy. This is the most money I've ever had. What do I do? And the thing, like I had this moment where it would just sit in a savings account. And I was like, this is awesome. I'm saving. And then somebody explained the concept of inflation to me. Yeah. And because inflation, you're essentially losing 3% a year by just sitting on money. And I was like, wait a minute. I worked so hard for this. I don't want to lose this. Yeah, it's just so, deteriorating in my bank account over there. <laughs> exactly. So there's so many aspects to this. But I just, I have the idea of a listener listening to this podcast who's taking their career in anything creative so seriously. And I so much want every person who listens to this to level up and to succeed and to get to that spot where they're like, oh, damn, I have money in the bank and savings. Now what? And like get past just the trying mm -hmm. to survive. So I wanted to go over like a couple basics with you. And like I kind of had a list of questions and maybe we could almost like rapid fire them or you can tell me where I'm wrong yeah. or if I'm missing something or not thinking about it. And hopefully just like paint a picture of a couple actionable steps or ways that people can be like, can can either get out of debt or to go to like, oh, sweet, I'm at this spot. Like I can do this, this and this next. Does that work for you? Yeah. That... Yeah. I was thinking, I don't know if I kind of answered the, the, the 
the total overall 101 sort of thing, but maybe I'll just give a quick bird's eye oh, view. Oh, dude, yeah, 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 that's awesome. Maybe it'll give some perspective. So I think kind of personal finance, you know, it, it, it really in, it doesn't encompass that much stuff, but it, what it involves is obviously, you know, you have your income and expense, your, your money you earn, money you spend, and, and the net result of that, whether, you know, hopefully you make more than you spend is kind of your savings. Um, but the, the, the tracking piece of the pie is, you know, just using some computer software to track your income and expenses so you know what you're spending your money on, you know what the net result of that is, and you know that you you are, in fact, either saving money or not. I mean, often in the beginning, in the early years, you definitely are spending more than you make. You don't make much and you have, you know, living expenses and so on. So, so you're going into debt. Um, it's not uncommon, but obviously you, you want to turn turn that around as soon as you can. I mean, I, I maxed out my debt maxed out at I think at seventy two thousand dollars in the hole. I was at age twenty five, um, and luck, luckily I was able to turn that around. Um, but but there's that, and then once you save money, um, it's like, what do I do with it? Like you were saying, yes. so so you invest it. And the reason you need to invest it is a, is a few things. Like, well, one, just like you said, if you, money sits in a savings account, it just erodes through inflation. Um, basically, the cost of goods goes up, so your bu- the buying power that your money has today won't it won't be the same, you know, a year from now. Um, but two, ultimately, with the money, and personal finance, and saving and everything, is you you are preparing for retirement ultimately and you know that's you know it's kind of a sleepy topic if if you're in your 20s but again it, yeah. it's inevitable for everybody um and we all know like we have to save that's you know whatever but it, it is ultimately for retirement and i mean the kids actually call it financial independence today uh which is a yeah exciting fire. financial term. independence and, you know early. you can achieve that even earlier hopefully right but mm-hmm. In order for you to achieve financial independence, it's very likely, unless you end up earning a lot of money, <clears throat> that in addition to saving money, you're going to need your money to make a lot of, you know, uh, return and compound interest and whatever you want to call it, in mm-hmm. order for you to get to like enough money where you can sort of comfortably retire, right? So you yeah. have to invest your money to not only beat the inflation thing, but also to like actually get far more you know, than than the three percent you're losing through inflation, so that your money's growing. You know, while you're at your day job, and that's very well, likely the only way you're going to reach you know a significant amount of money for retirement. So my other that. thing to interject there is in in this podcast, a lot of the people listening probably have something to do with a creative field or specifically music and touring, and that career is similar to an athlete where you can have a period of time for several years in your career where you're making a fuck ton of money because you're touring, you're on your perfect album cycle, you have this this wave, mm-hmm. but in all reality like artists don't tour forever. And I've yeah. had a lot of artists come on where it's like I mean a very like you know you can have a career of 10, 20 years, maybe more, maybe less, but like there will be pockets in these creative careers where you make a fuck ton and there is an ebb and flow that isn't the same as like a traditional nine to five. So I think that's even more important to understand like, all right, maybe you're in your pocket where you're making this huge influx of money. Don't treat that like it's always going to be the case and understand like you can set that aside now and have that work for you. So then you don't end up being that tired out like... (laughs) This is kind of me firing a shot. But like, if you don't feel like being the person loading in gear at House of Blues when you're 45 and you're done playing, (laughs) there are things you can do. And if you do feel like loading in gear at House of Blues, then fuck yeah, I'll love to have a conversation with you because I have (laughs) met some rad people like that. But (laughs) well, that that point is actually just backs up the whole money tracking like thing um, really well, because what money tracking does allow you to do is sort of kind of forecast your cash flow, so to speak. You know, I, I talk about it in business terms. Um, and it's like, like, you know, like what you just said in businesses too. some, some months you make a lot more, you go through downturns, whatever you, you need to basically know what your regular expenses are and kind of understand what your ebb and flow of income in and, and make sure you're going to make it through those dry spells basically, uh, and come out the other side without any issues. And, 
tracking your money, doing quote unquote bookkeeping is the way that you actually, um, you know, can can do that effectively. You know, businesses yeah. call it bookkeeping and and financial analysis. Uh, so I call it personal bookkeeping, you know, when you do it for your personal life. Um, yeah. But, and like to talk about that for a second, because I want to give actionable, tangible tips. So you're a big fan of Quicken. It's a great software. I think it's like a yearly or it's like a hundred like odd bucks, bucks for a year. year. Yeah. I mean, Quicken is like the old, the, like the, it's been around forever. Um, it's back like when you had to like go buy software at Staples. Yes. Know? Yeah. Um, like they sold it on CDs, yeah, it, but it, it does it was, still hold up. Yeah. It was probably oh. originally sold on floppy disks, you know? Uh, Holy shit. Yeah. You're probably right. But, but to add to that, I like, I will say if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, sick, like I don't really want to spend an extra hundred dollars a year when I'm not really making it, whatever. Like I have so many friends that will make basic Excel sheets or Google sheets and that is enough. Like the idea, the concept of just income and expenses can be done outside of that. Yes, I'm going to I'm going to challenge you on that. I, I don't think okay, if you're going to okay. spend the time to do it. I don't think you should do it like in, a, in in like not a pro way, so to speak. Like wow. just, you know, spreadsheets are they're limited. They're much more laborious. They're tedious. You know, like the software is there to make your life easier. It's like the e you know like it connects to the bank download your transactions it learns your stuff it eventually starts to do the job for you like if you're going to spend any time don't yeah. bother with spreadsheets just commit to some kind of software like i like quicken because like i said it's old older so it's very robust it does like you know it does everything so you can grow into it you can track your real estate you can track all your stocks and bonds like you i mean like really to good level and so on it's kind of pro professional but if you don't want to spend money like you can you, you can go get mint from into it you know it's free yeah. online because basically you know it captures your data and then tries to sell you personal loans and all that you know with pop-ups <laughs> but it's free yeah you know that that's the thing um so and there's go, wave go apps use that, too. you know and there's, there's a bunch of, yeah there's a bunch of them but i would definitely use something that you want to be able to put in your data and then generate reports of like income expense, categorize things really well, have your categories add up so you can be like, oh, my God, this whole month I spent this on, you know, eating out, this on groceries, this on laundry, whatever. Um, and it, just spreadsheets, it's, you're, you're, it's just like the most limited thing. So I wouldn't do that. OK, respect. No, I'm um, so yeah. glad you said that. And thank you for that challenge. And you're yeah. right. So if you don't want to drop coin. Find a free one and actually shout out to Play Louder. I think you have a list of ones that are free and ones yeah, that aren't free. I got you some. I mean, even article. Quicken's got like a new fangled one that's fully web based and it's like literally three bucks a month. And it probably oh, crazy. would it probably would convert into like the more, you know, robust one at some point, you know. Um, nice. Okay, go dope. So track your finances. Yeah. Is that, am I hearing so that as the first track step? your finances? Yep. Uh, learn okay. about investing, another another main pillar. And um, the other one about like, like I have kind of three pillars. If you go to my website, I have three kind of categories of topics. One I call personal finance or, or personal mm -hmm. booking, money tracking, that sort of stuff. One is uh, investing uh, or, you know, in my case, I did a lot of real estate investing. So I, I have a lot of, in that particular arena of investing. But most people are going to invest either through the stock market, you know, quote unquote stock market, which includes, you know, your average stocks, bonds, ETFs, all that sort of stuff. Or you're going to invest in probably personally owned real estate, you know, like rentals or whatever, or some some version of that. Those are really the two most accessible things for investing. But you got to learn about those things and figure out what what's the best way for you to like get your money to grow. And then the third pillar or topic to, you know, the kind of overall world of, of personal finance is being entrepreneurial. And really, it's about income generation. Like there is no substitute when it comes to saving money. Uh, there is no substitute for making more money. You know, you, like you got to have a good offense when it comes to basically setting yourself up for like, you know, the island based, you know, um, pina colada retirement or whatever uh like you need you need money and it's you can only save so much you can only like you know tighten the belt so tight you need to figure out ways to make more money and 
you do that in my experience, you know, having an entrepreneurial mindset, I guess, at the very least is what helps you to do that. Like not every, you know, I liked post-production because it was something I saw that I could own a post-production company. I thought it wasn't like trying to go make microchips or something. You know what I mean? Like if you work in the, yeah. you know, in Microsoft, you're like, oh, am I going to, I can't oh, go start the next Microsoft necessarily. Or if you work in insurance, you're like, oh, I don't know, whatever. So, but you can be entrepreneurial even at those kinds of jobs, I think, or be entrepreneurial in a side job capacity or whatever. And entrepreneurialism or business ownership benefits you in multiple ways. One is potential for higher income, which is going to help you. The other thing that it gave me was while I worked like a dog, don't get me wrong, I I, I wasn't an employee. So I was, I could control my day a little bit more. So if I wanted to spend time going and looking at real estate, no one was going to tell me I couldn't do that. You know what I mean? I had plenty of stuff to do, but I, and I would work, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day, but, uh, I could do what I wanted during the day, you know, whereas the employee sitting next to me, like I was, you know, very open to whatever, but in, but it's like harder when, you know, you're in an employee situation, you're like, I have my job and, you know, they don't want me going out knowing that I'm looking at real estate, you know, what I mean, I you got to make up some story, you know, in that case or whatever. So it, it gives you a little bit more control over your day. Um, but also the, the kind of hidden fourth pillar of personal finance is tax efficiency, I call it, or understanding your how you how and uh, how you pay taxes, what makes up your tax bill and how how to be like, you know, the most efficient about it, uh, or basically don't overpay in taxes. And Owning a business, business ownership is afforded a lot greater tax breaks than the average W-2 employee. I mean, like it's not even it's not even a comparison. The, the the majority of taxes from a percentage to income basis, uh, the W-2 employee is basically, you know, holding the bag or, or hold, you know, carrying that burden on their shoulders more so than the business owner uh, yeah. or real estate investor or whatever. So business ownership, re owning real estate, um, owning, investing and being an owner of stocks and stuff like that all comes with tax benefits. Um, and your biggest thing you spend money on every year is taxes. So if you can figure out a way to like save some money on taxes, you know, legally, obviously, and, you know, through, through the options that are available to you, uh, you, that's the easiest way to make more money because you're just, you're, you're not sending it to the IRS, you're sending it, you know, into your own bank account. So business right. ownership just gives you, you know, really big benefits in that realm. So, so those are the three pillars, you know, it's, it's personal finance, it's investing and it's entrepreneurialism. Um, <clears throat> and under those pillars, there's guess endless, you know, details, I guess, or whatever. But it, maybe now we can we can jump into some questions that you have, and they prob they probably fall into one of those pillars. Yeah, totally. Say. And I'll just I'll kind of like rapid fire through them. And again, like for a listener, like this is kind of a newer, different format mm -hmm. for me. And I was just like, I really appreciate Joe. He's such a smart guy, and I I wanted to do this episode to kind of try to pay it forward and try to shine a little bit of a light on it because it was something that I wished I learned sooner. I kind of had to learn it from a friend's dad and it, it's just there's a lot there. So any light shown on this, I think, is better than nothing. And if we need to come back and specifically go topic by topic or something, I don't know. Yeah, but I I'm love done. this. I'm so. going to come back on and keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> we do like talking, you and I. Absolutely. Um, OK, so a couple of things that I wrote uh, before you before you can really start saving. Like I love, I think the thing, I love tracking finance. Like I love mm -hmm. that as like your first step. You can start anywhere, you can have debt, you can have money, you can have whatever. You can always track it. It's a great place to start. Um, something that I wrote is like getting rid of debt before you start investing because you're probably gonna pay more interest in debt than you are gonna make um, percentage on investing. Mm -hmm. Any tips on paying off debt? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I would say, generally speaking, the idea of paying off debt before doing anything else is good, um, but not always. It depends on what debt it is and depends on what interest rate it comes with. Most credit cards these days are pretty pretty high interest rate, so it's 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 likely 
you're going to want to pay those off first. But student loans, for example, have lower rates and more flexibility of repayment and different things like that. So they're not always worth paying off first uh, or you know, before you start investing. Now, you don't want to not pay them off and go on vacation. Well, I mean, not that I have anything as vacation. I mean, it's important. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. You don't want to not pay them off yeah. and go buy, you know, ridiculous stuff that you don't need or whatever or, or just out, you know, spend beyond your means. But mm-hmm. if you're going to not pay your student loans and invest the money or buy a house, um, then that's probably something worth doing. Um, <clears throat> but in, in the other thing about paying down like something like a credit card <clears throat> uh, first is not so bad because credit cards are revolving credits. So like you can pay it off and then that that spending capacity is still there, you know, because some people say like, oh, you should have an emergency fund first before you do anything. You know, Mm. and I'm like, no, don't have an emergency fund. Put just pay your credit cards off with your emergency fund, because then if you have an emergency, generally you can pay for that emergency with your credit card. Right. So Mm. in the interim, you just saved a whole bunch of money on credit card interest. You know, so the emergency fund stuff like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I, I have rules about the emergency fund. In but in terms of like tips to pay down debt, ultimately back to tracking the the finances like you have to know how much you make you have to know how Mm -hmm. much you're spending on stuff and you have to know that you're spending less than you make and if you're and the only way you can like know that is to track it truly and the only way you you then can tighten the belt is to know like what am i spending my money on and where can i save like you know it's really hard to do that like loosely in your head people think they can but they're just lays lying to themselves because they don't feel like doing the work um, again that's a great step though is tracking it it comes back to that again and i love it 100 percent. other question <clears throat> so with savings like when you start to track your personal finance and you get a grip on it what percentage should people target to save like what's like what is that well i guess it depends how much money you make you know <laughs> i mean mm. you, like when you're making like you know and you're in la and you make fifty thousand dollars a year you're not you're not able to save that much if if you're you're probably going into debt. You know what I mean? Um, like, but I would say a good place to start is five percent. You know, if you're not making much money, what you need to do is you need to look at your spending, make a budget, and say, okay, I make fifty grand. This then I pay my taxes. Then I want to save five percent, so I want to save twenty five hundred bucks. Can I live on the rest? And, you know, or how can I live on the rest? What can I do? What can I change in order to make sure that after my taxes and after my savings, I don't actually go into debt on some credit card or whatever? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I I guess like really the thing is and like really what I'm looking for out of this and the reason why I ask any question is if I were an artist or a creative and I wanted to take this seriously and I met you because you only have so many hours in a day and you can only talk to so many people, it, like the real question, the basic question is just where do I start and what do I do? So like, what would your advice be to somebody listening to this? They want to take finance seriously. They want to get in there. They want to give themselves a good foundation what do you tell that person? Like, that's really what I'm. I really at. tell them that they got to start tracking their finances with some sort of computer software. Um, yeah. And it is foundational. Like, without that, you're just throwing darts at a board. You know what I mean? Like, really, you're, you know, you don't have a plan without that because you don't have the information. Like, I, I have a little funny post on my website. It's called about personal bookkeeping. And I'm like, I set this scenario. I'm like, okay, like, you know, in the, in the, in the, I don't know why when I wrote it, I was thinking of like being in a hot tub at a ski lodge. So I was like, <laughs> all right, like picture this. You're, you know, you got some money you want to invest in something. You're in the, you're, you're at, you happen to be skiing. You're in a hot tub. This guy pops in the hot tub and he tells you about his business or his business idea, or she tells you about her business, business idea. And they're like, you know, we're looking for investors you want to invest in. And then you say to them, well, all right, well, well, how much money like do you make, you know, with the product right now? How much does the product cost you? What's the net, you know, on the product currently? Like, what's your operating budget? Like, how do you know, 
just these basic questions about bookkeeping, you know, that, that bookkeeping answers. And the guy goes, oh, man, I just, you know, bookkeeping is just annoying. You know, we just don't really we just don't really bother with that. It's just boring and it bums us out. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know any of the answers to any of those questions. You would be like, you're an idiot. Like, how would I, <laughs> why would I invest in something with somebody who can't even like know the numbers about their business? Like, it just makes no sense, right? Businesses don't do well if they don't track their finances and do bookkeeping. Like, so why would you think you could do well in your personal life or your personal finances by just guessing? You know what I mean? Just sort of like doing it like willy nilly off the cuff, you know, using your gut. Like you just can't. Like you need actual knowledge. So the foundational work is is bookkeeping and it teaches you it doing it actually just teaches you about money it teaches you how money works it teaches you what net worth is it teaches you like you know how much your income what's what's good income for you what's bad sometimes you know if if for every buck you make doing something you spend a buck 10 well you don't want to you want to keep doing that right (laughs) you want to yeah and bookkeeping tells you that so it, it really is like the linchpin um and it's it's the most tedious part unfortunately now some people are like you know that i've talked to are like man i make pretty good money i just i haven't done that kind of stuff but it's like i've done pretty well and like i have savings it's not like it's hindered me to not do it and i'm like totally if you make so much money that like it doesn't you know like you're 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 good you're you're saving plenty of money for your future uh without even worrying it i mean good for you but the truth is you would probably be saving more and you probably would be investing more if you knew, you know, but yeah. if it's not a big concern, then, you know, that's your choice. Um, yeah. I love that you're owning it and you're like, yo, this isn't necessarily just some like easy snap your fingers thing, but it's an important thing. Yeah. And like, start to pay attention to it and start to learn it. The, or the investments that make somebody. lots of money, they're complicated. Like that's mm-hmm. okay. It doesn't have to be easy for it to be worth doing. Actually, the old saying goes, if it were easy, everybody would do it, right? Everybody would be a millionaire if it were easy, but not everyone's a millionaire because it's hard. Uh, Uh And it takes it takes work, you know, but it's 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 uh, it's work that pays, you know, endless kinds of dividends, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I appreciate you. I really do. Thanks. And for a listener, I, I again, like, let us know on this episode if there's a specific topic or if you're just like, y'all need to chill anything. Like, I just want to hear it. But if you are interested and you did take something away from this, I will shout out Joe that he has taken the time to write a pretty in-depth, detailed blog about a lot of these topics. And I have read a lot of those articles and learned a lot. So if any of this is interesting to you and you do want to seriously get a start in it, whether you're hiring him or not, he's written a blog that I think is sick and I appreciate you doing that. Thanks, so. dude. I appreciate it. And, and, I, and I'm sorry if I turn any of your listeners off to personal finance. <laughs> I listened to that one episode and that shit seems hard, <laughs> man. I'm out. This guy really made it sound hard. It just doesn't sound like any fun at all. Now, I didn't think it sounded like good before, but now it sounds terrible. <laughs> we've gone backwards. Yeah, we've gone backwards. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Your podcast has single-handedly kept, like, I don't know how many thousands of people poor. Okay, that's that's what's happened here. <laughs> Welcome to Where Are All My Friends. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's oh, not that shit. hard. It really isn't. That's what I'm going to. I'm just going to keep saying that. From going, it's, it's easy. It's easy. It's totally easy. You should just do it. <laughs> just do it. Well, I think that the the data is there and it is. I, I'm I'm excited to just shine some kind of light on it. I really am. Uh, yeah. Where can everybody find you if they if they want to get in touch or pass the blog? Like, what's the yeah, best way to reach out? Yeah, that blog you mentioned is called Play Louder. Uh, mm-hmm. it, the, our slogan is work smarter plan better, play louder. <laughs> um, so it does kind of, you know, tie in a little bit to, you know, your, your music oriented audience. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I got just tons of stuff there. I got some free courses too, where I kind of package up the info in a little bit more like, you know, easier to, to take in form. And then, 
if you sign up for those, you're going to go into my little sales funnel where I try to pitch you on buying my paid course, uh, but my videos aren't that good. So you probably won't buy those. Um, but the free, <laughs> the free ones are actually, we really got to work on good. making you more accessible. Yeah, man, my I'm, guy. <laughs> I've decided on this show, I'm going anti-accessible. So I've got some courses, but, I, but there's just tons, there's tons of free info. If you read the whole blog, you wouldn't need to pay for anything, but you know, the courses do kind of get you a little bit more into like, Ex, you know, verbal explanation of things because obviously reading things isn't always the easiest or best way for people to learn. And then I got some how-to videos on how to set up Quicken and do various things, and and then also do retirement planning. Actually, let me let me li- leave with one. Yeah, thing. another yeah, yeah. thing I think people should do that no one ever does is they actually plan out you know your your life a little bit like one other thing i do when people start working with me is i'm like all right we gotta like come up with a plan for your you know your the business to you and where you're headed and ultimately you're headed to retirement so it's kind of like we figure out like what would you want your like retirement to look like you know just tell me like you want to be in an island you want to be in europe you want to be here in america whatever you know what do you want to be doing all day you want to travel you want to ride horses you know um and then you figure out all right what would that cost me on an annual basis to live that life. And then from there, you kind of figure out, okay, I'm going to I'm going to need to earn X amount of dollars to make that happen. And to do that, I'm going to need to save X amount of dollars a month, you know, for however many years, and it's going to need to get a return on average of about eight or nine or 10 percent or whatever. And it's not that hard to do. And in one of my paid courses, I have a whole spreadsheet so you can do it yourself, essentially. Um, and you actually you you map out your road to retirement or financial independence, as I like to say. And it's like I always say to people, I mean, obviously, like you generally, if you're going somewhere, you you know where you're going and then you map out a route to get to where you're going. But most people are just headed towards retirement. They have no plan. They have no route. They don't even know where it is. They don't know what it looks like. They're just like, I guess I should just put five percent of my paycheck in a savings account and then it all will work out you know yeah um yeah. so do the do that work it's not hard i got some i actually have a post that explains to you exactly how to do it and then you that puts a lot of stuff in perspective usually you're like wow i really got to save a lot of money in order to like stop working one day i should get on that <clears throat> yeah no that's a that's a great point is like really defining that goal because it makes it so much easier to work backwards when you have a defined yeah goal. when you know what's going on and why you're doing all this i think it actually helps to motivate you because you're like okay i see the purpose in in doing this work now like i have a, yeah. i have a goal without yeah, the goal you're huge. just like i don't know it just seems like a waste of my time yeah it's harder to be excited about it that's no that's a great point i I love i love that you conclude with that that's really cool actually awesome all right see i did it dude well thank you so so much totally seriously like it's it's really fun for me to try to challenge and or to to try to tackle new topics on this i'm always trying to bring something new to the table with this podcast and you are certainly that so thank you dude. well maybe one of your guests will be like oh i wish that dude said some stuff about xyz and then if that happens i'll come back on and talk about xyz <clears throat> yeah i would love that let us know seriously if there's a specific topic because again it's it's a big thing to cover broad but if there's a specific topic that would be helpful uh please let us know you can always send me a dm all my handles are at andrew ftw but then there's also the where all my friends youtube you, if you're watching this just leave a comment and if you're watching this click over to play louder and leave him a comment as yeah well. subscribe to that my works. youtube channel man just do it <clears throat> there it is Cool. All right, dude. Thanks Thank lot, you man. so, so much. Absolutely. Thank you. It's fun. So there you have it. Joe DeSanto, Personal Finance 101, I guess you would call it. I hope that helped you. I hope we didn't get too obscure. I hope we covered some fundamentals. If it did help, let us know. If it didn't help or if we left certain questions unanswered, also let us know. I'm always trying to cover different topics with this podcast, keep it fresh and really provide value. But this is definitely something that I hadn't really gotten into. So 
give me some feedback. Did this help you? Is it too obscure? Whatever. I just want to hear from you. It's super helpful. And my final note is if you want to help the podcast, this is definitely something that does not make me money right now, but it's something that I'm very passionate about and I want to continue to do it for as long as possible and have no intention on stopping. So if you want to help keep that going, supporting the podcast at patreon.com slash where all my friends is massively helpful and appreciated. I think that just about says it. Thank you as always for listening. I'll be back next next week with another episode.